Hello? What do I want? <laughs> I want Cadbury's. The Cadbury Show! <laughs> Reginald, I love the way your moustache twitches when you talk. <laughs> you know, you remind me of a film star. Oh, uh, Robert Taylor? Clark Gable? No, Lassie. <laughs> oh, how I'd love to meet some of those handsome men. Oh, come now, Elsie. What have they got after you've taken away their charm, and smiles and their voice? I don't know, but you can deliver me a cartload of what's left over. <laughs> You know, I could be a film star. After all, what have I got that Marilyn Monroe hasn't? Elsie, you've got that backwards. Yes, that's the trouble. I have got that backwards. <laughs> well, at least there's something you're straight on. What's that? The fact that Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate is beyond compare. Ah, that gives you your chance to talk, Reg. Yes, Elsie, and I'm going to take the bull by the horns and talk about milk. Milk, fresh, creamy milk. Oh, you can't milk that way. No, oh, no, 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 Elsie. I mean that glass and a half of pure, fresh, full cream milk that goes into every half pound of dairy milk chocolate. It's all that milk plus Cadbury world-famous quality chocolate that makes dairy milk Australia's number one favourite. The smoothest, creamiest chocolate you can buy. In all of the five different sized blocks of dairy milk, there's deep down flavour, solid nourishment. Buy a block tomorrow at... Uh, uh, what's the matter, Elsie? You tired? No, Reg. Why are you yawning? I'm not yawning. I'm trying to get a word in edgeways. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Elsie. I'm always getting carried away about dairy milk chocolate. J just three more words. Three? Yes, the password for good chocolate. You know, I want Cadbury's. Hey, isn't it a lovely day, Elsie? And haven't you got something for me? Well, I might give you a sisterly kiss, but we're getting a bit old for that kind of thing. Now, of course, if you were Purse... Purse? Don't mention that man to me. Besides, haven't you remembered what day this is? Day? What day, ma'am? It's my birthday. Is it? Mm. Oh, well, many happy returns, oh, dear. Thanks, love. Where's my present? Present? <laughs> Men, I'd forgotten all about your birthday. Oh, Elsie, how could you? Me own flesh and blood. Oh, it only seems like yesterday when I was a little baby. It doesn't seem like 35 years ago. It's nothing like 35 years, unless you were a very big baby. And then, not long after you came along, Dad, I thought you were a lovely baby. Did he, Min? Yes. I remember when Mama told him the doctor was bringing you, he said, well, that's lovely, that is. <laughs> Men, what good are birthdays? Be like me and forget the birthdays. It makes you feel younger. Now, you just go over to the park for a walk in the sun and I'll tidy your room up for you. Purse can help me too. Purse? If he's coming over, I don't want him tramping through my room with his great club hoppers. You can keep him out of my room. Well, yes, I think I will go for a walk. The air will be much fresher out than in here if that purse is going to be around. Someone mention my name. Hello, purse. Good eye, Jellybone. That does it. I'm off to the park. Yeah. And don't stand near the pond with your mouth open. An old duck like you's bound to cop a loaf of bread. <laughs> purse Brown, if I wasn't a lady, I'd have something to say to you. In that case, you can speak freely. Well, of all the cheek. I'm going, and on my birthday, too. Oh, Purse, you didn't have to be so rude to Minnie, especially on a birthday. Yeah, I know, but I had to get the old nag out of the way somehow. Else, that's here. What, the present? Yeah. I got it delivered to the back gate. It's in the wash house now. <gasps> Won't Min be surprised? And she thinks we forgot what day it was. Yeah. Well, this present's going to open the papers, I bet. Oh, I do think you're being nice, Purse, to go me harvest and the prize. Ah, oh, well, you're only old once. And when she hops the twig, the present will become ours anyway. <laughs> Purse, Brown, what a thing to say. Well, come on. Now's our chance to get the present up to our room. Right. You'll have to help me. It's heavy. Oh, all right. <laughs> Oh, come on, come on. Oh, look what you're doing, Jellybean. Hold it up. Hold it up. Yes. Oh. Now, have you got it? Yes. Yeah, well, 
Wipe like it up the front end. Uh, now lift. Uh, all right, now keep coming. Now through the door. No, not through the wall, the door. Oh, oh. Mind the glass. No, all right. Now you I... let your end down first and put it on the floor. Easy. Oh, my fingers are under it. We'll pull them out. Well, yeah, that's done. Oh, Perce, thank goodness. Here, yeah, sit down and I'll plug it in. Oh, it does look lovely. Men will be thrilled. She's always wanted a radio set of her own. Let's see if it's working. Wonder if it is working. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to sing You Will Remember Vienna. That's Tom Tavey broadcasting. What song did he say he was going to sing? I thought you heard, Elsie. It's You Will Remember Vienna. <laughs> A place for life to ebb and flow, a place for love to live and glow, the honor is the name, a fairy land of fame. When once you've heard the laughter gay, you weep when you are torn away, a thousand memories call you. chocolate. That's the name that stands first and foremost in good chocolate. That's because there's so much extra goodness in each thick, chunky square. By a famous Cadbury process, each half pound of dairy milk contains the goodness of milk. Milk, fresh, creamy milk. A glass and a half of milk from Tasmania's lushest farms. It's bubbling, sparkling milk blended with Cadbury quality chocolate that makes each bite smoother, creamier, more satisfying. When you choose dairy milk in the purple and gold wrapper, you're buying the milkiest milk chocolate your money can buy. Buy a block tomorrow. Judge its goodness. Dairy milk. Your cue for I want Cadbury's. Yeah, well, we'll switch it off now. Yes, Purse, we don't want Minnie to hear it when she comes in. It'll spoil the surprise. I bet she'll be excited. She'll nearly faint with joy. She'll probably even kiss you, Purse. Oh, no. Hello. Elsie, where are you? It's Minnie. Quick, look innocent. Just look nonchalant. Don't let, don't let all the damn things happen when she comes in. Just keep a straight face. Ah, oh, you're making it a bit tough, aren't you? Keeping a straight face when she comes into view. <laughs> Up in your room, Minnie. Oh, what a thrill she'll get. Shh, here she comes. Oh, so there you are. And you too, Purse. What's that silly look on your face? I mean, the sillier one than usual. Aye, now see here, Minnie. Purse, please. Oh, yes. 
Hello, Minnie dear. Did you have a nice walk, sister dear? I know what it is. You've broken my best willow teapot and you're trying to cover up. What's that thing you've put in my room? Oh, a wireless. Well, I'm not going to take anyone else's junk. Just get it out of here. But, men, it's yours. Mine? Who gave it me? Person me. We did remember your birthday, see? Where did you steal it from? <laughs> we didn't steal it. We bought it for you. It's yours. That's right, Minnie. Sixteen guineas. I paid the pounds and purse paid the shillings. <laughs> it's mine? Well, get your greasy hands off the polish. Aye, but look here. And, and, and look, look, you've scratched it, you clumsy fool. Well, aren't you please? Shh, no, quiet, quiet. I, I want to tune it in. Hey, hey, it's broken. It won't go. Well, it was going a little while ago. Hey, but it is lovely. It's what I've always wanted. Now I'll be able to listen to all my favourite cereals here. But, but, but why isn't it going? Let's have a look. Is the aerial wire on? Hey, what's this note to say? Do not reverse this plug under any circumstances. Ah, oh, the silly fools, I know what they're talking about. The red side of the plug should go in the red side of the socket. Any fool can see that. That's the trouble. No, 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 Purse, be careful. I know what I'm doing. I'll just reverse the plug. There. That should do it. It's on. Oh! Oh! Now look what you've done. You busted it! Oh, no, 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 man, it was nobody's fault. Purse was only trying to help you. Well, he's ruined my radio set. What do you mean, your radio set? Don't forget we gave it to you. Well, why didn't you just give me the set and keep your big paws off it? Purse can put his paws anywhere he likes. Not on my wireless set. Well, of all the ungrateful biddies, I'm leaving. And as for your stupid wireless set, I hope it chokes you. And that goes for me too. I'll just buy it and give it to you. At least you might say thank you for your present. But what good is it to me? He brought it. Well, of all the mean things, I'm leaving too. Come on, Else. Let's go down and leave her alone. How do you like that? We give her a present. And, and she throws it down the gift horse's mouth. Yeah. And not even a word of thanks. Thanks for the present. Well, at least that's something. But just the same, someone's got to pay to have my radio set fixed. Aye, come off it. It's your set, so you pay to have it fixed. You broke it, so you pay for it. If you don't, I'll sue you. Ah, pull your head in. Now give us a pine. You heard what Purse said, you give us a pine. Gladly. <laughs> I've got hundreds travelling pines. Oh, Mr Hercules, it's you. Yes, Miss Elsie. But it beats me how I drag myself around. What with having one foot in the grave and the other shot full of gout? That's Winge and Willie. As if we haven't got enough to put up with already. I've been in the sun all day and my head hurts. Well, perhaps it's sunstroke. Are there any spots in front of your eyes? Oh, yes. I see spots. And how long have you been seeing them? Next month it'll be about 22 years. Well, you should rest your eyes. I do rest my eyes. I read the newspaper in the dark. Well, how can you see the print? I can't. That's how I rest my eyes. But you've got no idea how my body suffers. It's not the suffering I mind so much. It's the pain I can't stand. What sort of pains, Mr Hercules? Can you describe them? Well, they're all different shapes. Square ones, triangular ones. Just one big ache with a little agony on top of that. Sort of a float. If I died right now, my stomach would feel like this for another five years. And just what are you taking for your stomach, Mr Hercules? I don't know. Just make me an offer. <laughs> well, thank you for delivering the fruit, Mr Hercules. And if I were you, I'd see about your tummy ache. You ought to get to the seat of the trouble. Oh, thank goodness the pain hasn't reached there yet. <laughs> Well, goodbye. Be brave. Hey, look out. Here comes Moan and Minnie again. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, so there you are. There's something else I've just thought of. Who's supposed to pay the licensee for this wireless you gave me? You are, of course. Then that does it. I'm not accepting it. 
What with the cost of repairs and the cost of a license, it's too much to pay. Well, what about the price we had to pay for it? Oh, that, that's nothing to me. Minnie Smith, don't you ever speak to me again. After all the trouble we went to you could get it, you turn around and say a thing like that. It's too much. It's too much. Well, how would you like someone to break your wireless set? Well, I wouldn't carry on the way that you're carrying on. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? Well, we'll see about that. Minnie, Minnie, get away from Elsie's wireless. Let's see how you like it. Oh, Minnie. First she's broken me dial. Blimey. <laughs> You can't do that. Can't I? I've done it. I'll sue you. That's what I'll do. I'll sue you. Yeah, we'll sue. And I'm suing you for breaking mine. Oh, yeah? Who's going to sue who? Well, we sue who's going to sue who, so come on, Bert. Yeah. Purse, was he there? Did you speak to him? Yeah. Jack Happy said he'd come straight away and advise us. I told him all about it. I still think we should have called in a real solicitor, Jellybean. But first, Jack's really clever and Bab says he knows all the answers. <laughs> but are we really going to sue, Minnie? Well, of course we'll sue, unless she pays for the damage that she did. Nobody's going to crack my dial and get away with it. <laughs> Even my sister. What if she sues first? She wouldn't dare. See who it is, Purse. Yeah? Oh, pardon me, is this where Miss Minnie Smith lives? This is the house. But that woman lives upstairs. And I use the term woman very loosely. I say, aren't you Mr. Percival Brown? Yeah, that's me. I thought so. Could I have your autograph? Ah, oh, sure. You just sign here. Ah, okay, can't they, huh? Hey, don't you want this back? Hey, no, thank you. That's your copy. Ah, oh, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, now I'll see my client upstairs. Who is that, Purse? A real friendly bloke wanted me autograph. Gave me some papers, too. Hey, papers? Henderson, Wilkinson and Henderson. Blimey, she is suing us. Well, that does it. Now, we'll fight her. If that little legal eagle's here again, I'll give him a roasting. Now, see here, Squirt. No, wait a minute. Who are you calling Squirt, Drip? Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, come in, Jack. It's on. The great family feud is on. Minnie's suing us and we're suing Minnie. Yeah, the Smiths and the Browns are feuding again. Well, that gives a bit of feud for thought. <laughs> yeah, you get it? Feud, food, get the... Oh, well, uh... <laughs> we'll just wait till I get out my briefs. Aye, not in front of Elsa. <laughs> no, 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 the legal papers, the legal papers. Ah. Now, here's your copy and this is yours, Miss Elsie. What's this? This is your unrehearsed testimony. Oh. Now, now, Elsie, you, you just sit in that chair and we'll... We, yeah, that's the one. And we'll pretend that it's the witness box and that we're in court. Now, we'll practice. Uh, Miss Smith, will you tell us in your own words what happened on the day in question? Uh, here are the words. Words? What's this? That's your script. Oh. Now, go on, go ahead. Oh. <clears throat> your Honour, my grisly little story begins when I bought a radio with my boyfriend. Look adoringly at Purse. Look adoringly at Purse. Oh, yeah, they're directions, like stage oh, directions. I, I put a lot of them in there. They help warm things up. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, don't make it too hot. Well, when I bought a radio with my boyfriend, <sighs> Purse Brown... All right, don't overdo the adoring look or they'll send for the ambulance. And then we planned to surprise my sister and then good friend, Miss Minnie Smith. Smile at Minnie. Where would she be sitting? Oh, over here. Carry on. Oh. Little did we dream that we would end up in court before such a handsome, distinguished, and honourable jurist as you, Your Honour, lift skirts and cross legs. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you end up with the contempt of the court. Yeah, but now listen, you've both got to know what to say when the judge says... Elsie Smith, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. First Brown, do you swear to tell the truth? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. Bring in the first witness, Babs McKinnon. <laughs> Babs McKinnon. Yes. Now, Babs, where were you on the night of the 15th? Oh, so you won't talk, huh? No, but I'll sing. <laughs> The lightning seems to fly across the summer sky And shooting stars begin to fall around you The most amazing things take place 
Each time that we come face to face And simply cause you're there The music everywhere The melodies I hear Would just astound you And they invite us to embrace Each time that we come face to face And when you are near The world's a wintry thing But then when you appear It's spring again, it's spring The first time that we kissed I heard my heart insist Don't ever let him go Now that he's found you And if the skies be gray or blue, you face them face to face with you. And when you aren't near, the world's a wintry thing. But then, when you appear, it's spring again, it's spring. The first time that we kissed, I heard my heart insist, don't ever let him go now that he's found you. And if the skies be gray or blue, he'll face them face to face with you. There's one special reason why Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate is Australia's favourite. It's Cadbury quality. Yes, in Dairy Milk there's the freshest of fresh milk, the purest of pure chocolate expertly blended to make a chocolate that's smoother, creamier, more delicious. And Cadbury's quality has always been the same. There's still that glass and a half of pure, fresh, full cream milk in each half pound. That's why Dairy Milk is so popular why dairy milk is so good for you. Buy a block next time you're out. Keep dairy milk always handy. For nourishing goodness, rich, deep down flavour, dairy milk is all Australia's good reason for I want Cadbury's. Silence in the court! Silence in the court! Silence in the court! I want silence! Oh! Oh, it's me. Call Elsie Smith. Elsie Smith! Yahoo! Come out wherever you are! Here I am. You swear to tell the tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth to help me? Be seated. Proceed. Now, what is your name? You know my name. Yeah, please tell the court. I'm Elsie Smith. Now, Miss Smith, in your own words, please tell the court what happened on the day in question. Well, Your Honor, my busy little story begins when I bought a radio with my boyfriend. Ah, oh, Purse Brown. And we plan to surprise my sister and former friend, Minnie, Miss Minnie Smith. I object. Witness has been rehearsed. Objection sustained. Madam, remember you're on the witness stand. I won't tolerate untruth. Yes, sir. Little did we dream that we'd end up in court before such a handsome, distinguished and honourable, good-looking judge as you. I object. Objection overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, my dear. Where was I? Uh, you were up to that part about the handsome, distinguished judge. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Purse adjusted the set for her when suddenly there was an explosion and then Minnie went out on her head and ran amok. With, with flakes of foam on her lips, she rushed into the parlour and smashed the dial of my wireless set. Thank you. You may stand down. <laughs> Counsel for the defence, do you wish to cross-examine? Uh, no, Your Honour. I wish to call a witness who'll tell us what really happened. Call Minnie Smith. Yahoo! Minnie, you're on. Repeat after me. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help me. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, which is more than someone in this room, so help me. Uh, <laughs> tell the court, please, what really happened that day. Well, Elsie and that brown person forced their company on me without being invited. As an excuse, they brought a broken-down old wireless set. Then Purse, who is more commonly known as Mr. Know-It-All, took an axe from his pocket and bashed the set and it exploded. 
Then they forced me to go down to the parlor, and with fiendish glee, Purse Brown picked up my foot and pushed it through the glass of that. <laughs> that is a lie. She's off a rock. Objection! Oh. I object to I Order! Order! Order in the court! Coco and toast for two. <laughs> Well, uh, there seems to be a discrepancy in these stories. I, I remind you all you're under oath and perjury carries a severe penalty. Officer, bring my radio set from my chambers. Now, let's reenact the scene and find out the truth. <laughs> there, that's right. Uh, bring it in here. Now, Miss Minnie, would you show me where Purse bashed the set with the axe? Well, now that I think of it, I don't think it was exactly an axe. Uh, more like a screwdriver. And then what happened? Well, there's a plug thing marked red and blue, and a dopey thing tried to tell me that the red wire should go in the red socket. Well, of course it should. That's what I said. No, it shouldn't. Look, you, you've got the same kind of set, and the blue wire is in the red socket. Well, it shouldn't be. Anyway, I can't see how turning them around could cause an explosion. Well, it did. Come here, come now, now, now. I happen to be a radio hobbyist, <laughs> and such a thing could never cause an explosion. Well, now, I suggest that you three people should forget your differences. Make it up. After all, your two sisters and good friends are worth more than a radio set. Ah, oh, Judge, you're right. Men, I'm so sorry. I'll pay to have your set fixed. And now, see, I'll pay to have your dial fixed. <laughs> It'll cost a fortune. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to see you've patched up your differences. I'm dismissing the case, and let it be a lesson to you. We must never lose our temper. You're quite right, Your Honor. Especially over a little misunderstanding like reversing the plug in a radio set. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Officer! Oh, you, sir? Turn the plug round in my set, will you? Yes, sir! Oh, you, you stupid Alec! You, I'll have the law on you! <laughs> If you enjoy Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, and who doesn't, then you'll love Dairy Milk with crisp candied peanuts. It's called Cadbury's Candy Nut Chocolate, and it's available at your favorite chocolate counter. In Cadbury's Candy Nut, besides smooth, creamy dairy milk, there's the extra goodness of peanuts, toasted to perfection and coated with delicious candy. Every square is packed with double flavor, every deep bite full of satisfying nourishment. Try a block of Cadbury's Candy Nut Chocolate. It's another winner. Tomorrow, may Candy Nut your reason for... I want Cadbury's! In tonight's Cadbury show, you heard Minnie Love as Minnie, Kevin Brennan as our old friend Purse, Frank Strain as Mr. Hercules, John Millian as Jack Happy, Charles McCullum as the judge, Richard Ashley as the court officer, Leonard Bullen as the defense counsel. Songs by Babs McKinnon and Tom Toby, the music of Wilbur Cantwell. And now, this is Reginald Goldsworthy saying good night for Elsie, your Cadbury star, Rita Pornsford. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.